Hey, Gaming Noodle here with an episode of Back in Time. Today I'm going to be looking at Zelda The Wind Waker. It is actually one of my most favorite Zelda games in the series, having some of the most memorable and charming characters in any Zelda game. Now, this game came out in 2003, so it's not as old as the other games I've discussed on this series, but still, 10 years is quite a long time, I think. When it actually was announced and people saw the drastic change in the style of Zelda, it caused quite a bit of stir among its fans, because this was the first time people had seen cell shading in a Zelda game and uh, people I think wanted something a bit more realistic because of they, they wanted to see what the GameCube could do and, and coming from Ocarina of Time they thought the next logical step was to go even further with that kind of uh, with that kind of design and realistic approach so when people saw the cell shaded look some people loved it because uh, they could see it was very expressive and it had a lot of personality, but others were just completely caught off guard and I think it turned them off a bit because their expectations were completely thrown off and so it caused a bit of backlash. I was actually one of those people that didn't mind at all uh, with the cell shaded look. I thought it, it was uh, fine. Of course I was one of those people that would have liked to seen a more realistic Zelda, but that would come later with Twilight Princess, which also is another fantastic entry to the series. The world itself is an ocean, which again is a drastic difference from the Legend of Zelda series, which usually takes place on large landscapes in the mainland. With this game, you travel by boat, across to pockets of islands scattered all around the world and the world itself is actually huge uh, it's very big uh, the only problem that I had at the time and I still kind of do now when I've played it uh, recently is that I wish there was some land masses that were a lot bigger I th there are many islands but they're very small and I just kind of I always wanted something a bit more but it's still great nonetheless I should also point out now that the music in this game is just as charming as the visuals. With every swing of the sword you get a musical note and uh, it's also incorporated into the enemies. There are about five temples, um, but I think around seven if you count other places where they're like mini dungeons. So I would say I guess seven overall in total for the game. In this game you have a wind baton that you use to control the wind and other such things such as companions or the day and night cycle, all that kind of stuff. When you change the wind direction, it helps you sail a lot faster across the sea. Now using the wind to your advantage becomes very helpful later on in the game when you have to sail across the entire ocean world finding and collecting pieces of the Triforce. Now I know some people found this sort of design in the game very tedious and boring to be going here and there collecting things, but for me, I actually loved it. I like these sorts of things in games because in my RPGs I really love the world and I love being immersed and it's fun doing dungeons and all, but I definitely feel more relieved once I've finished the dungeon and I'm back inside, uh, back out in the open world instead of inside in a dungeon. So there you have it. This is Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. If you haven't played this yet and it looks interesting, 
I hope you pick it up and have a go, and enjoy it as much as I did.